so considering that I am more bored than Charles Manson at Disneyland, and considering that I bought this oscilloscope, una ohm, das oscilloscopio. I made a curve tracer. This bad boy can test diodes, NPN transistors, to some extent PNP transistors and to some extent JFETs and MOSFETs. It has a testing voltage of uh, 10 volts or 15 volts, depending if you want to watch out of the screen, and a testing current of maximum 70 milliamps. It has uh, seven automatic levels uh, for the base current uh, for making seven traces and six levels on this selector here for a coarse range of base currents. And this is both for testing if a component is in working condition or to compare a component with a given code to a component with the same code but a different manufacturer or a different era. And yeah, I noticed that uh, there are differences. This schematic is what I based myself on and it comes from an Italian electronics magazine and it dates back to the 1980 and I made uh, some mods and uh, especially I got rid of the 555. This is the component list of the original schematic, uh, again if you're interested. And this is my schematic of the curve tracer you see now. And you'll find this same schematic in the description of the video uh, as a link. And no, it's not my only fans because nobody wants to see me naked. Okay, let's try this thing. First test. Is a simple diode, a 1N4007, connected with just a probe of the collector and emitter. And we see on the scope, this is the uh, volts axis and the current axis. And you see it starts conducting at like 0.7 volts and it rises in current up to like 70 milliamps. Uh, now it's uh, switching, it's oscillating with the SC of the transformers and it uh, traces this curve. And it goes also a bit past one volt here. This is one volt per division. And uh, this because there's a resistor in the circuit that adds a bit of drop and uh, it's not uh, actually identical to the response of a diode, but kind. And you see this error only at high currents, uh, at maximum current. Okay, now let's test a blue LED that you maybe can't see. Now you see it. It's driving hard. And this is the response. And as you can see, it uh, starts conducting at like 2.5 volts. And it has a curve that is uh, quite lean on the right because this is not a perfect Zener diode, but you can use the LEDs as Zeners. And it goes also past the 3 volts, and this is like uh, 50 million per maximum of peak current. Okay, now a red one. And as you can see, it starts conducting at a lower voltage, less than 2 volts. And the curve is also less lean on the right, maybe because a red LED acts better as a Zener. And anyways, if you wonder, this is what happens if you disconnect the component. It makes just this flat line of the voltage axis. And this is an infrared LED that starts conducting at just above 1 volt. And it's from an optocoupler. Scotty diode uh, SR260, much less in voltage drop. Zener diode 10 volts. And this is the result. As you can see, it's uh, quite steep and precise at reaching the uh, Zener voltage, and it's 10 volts, 10 divisions. Another Zener, uh, 3.9 volts. This time is a bit more interesting because it's less precise. It's a low quality Zener, Chinese uh, fake stuff, etc. It's less precise and a bit, a bit lean on the right, maybe too much. Anyways, this is the Zener voltage that is uh, correct. Micro oven diode, uh, yes, you can test also this, 
but in forward voltage and uh, yeah uh, as you can see there are a bunch of diodes in series uh, and they start conducting at around 8 volts uh, forward high voltage diode uh, 5 kilovolts uh, it's an R5000F fast diode and yeah also this has a bunch of uh, diodes in series and you see them when polarized uh, directly Okay, now the transistors, we have a BC547B at the moment, signal transistor, and these are the curves, uh, generated auto automatically by the EC in the curve tracer. Okay, let's calculate the HFE of the transistor, let's uh, see the fourth curve here, that is uh, one, two, uh, two and a half uh, divisions times uh, 50 millivolts it's 125 millivolts and uh, every 10 millivolts it's uh, 1 milliampere of current uh, on the uh, y probe so it's uh, 12.5 milliampere okay let's do a thing let's calculate this we have the uh, third position we have the third position here for medium currents and the fourth trace is uh, 35 million, 35, 34 microamperes. So, sorry for the exposure. Okay. So we have uh, 12.5 milliamperes divided 0.034 microamperes equals uh, 367 of HFE. Anyways, these are the other uh, levels, uh, coarse levels of current for uh, transistors that are bigger and more deaf, so you need more current, even more. And as you can see, it's already saturated, and uh, even the lowest curve is already polarizing the transistor a lot, maximum. And yeah, now it's uh, quite polarized. Uh, just the two curves are not uh, at uh, maximum saturation of the VCE. Okay, now a way more deaf transistor, a uh, uh, BU508 horizontal deflection with a way lower HFE. We have the maximum setting uh, for the base currents of the coarse selector. And uh, although these uh, just four curves don't saturate the transistor, just the remaining three, the higher three at these currents. Anyways, let's calculate the HFE. Let's take, for example, the uh, third curve, that is uh, 1.23.2 divisions times 100 millivolts, it's 0 0.32 volts, and uh, it's uh, 32 milliamperes. So we have uh, the uh, sixth position, the third curve is 1.2 milliamperes on the base. So uh, let's do the calc. We have uh, 32 milliamperes divided uh, 1.2 equals uh, 26, 27 of HFE. And as you can see, the other settings, the other course settings for the bases, don't polarize the, the transistor almost at all. We can increase is the maximum and it's not the minimum. Now it's the minimum. Hit maximum sensitivity. Totally deaf. Okay, now let's test uh, uh, 2SC3355. That is a, a radio low power transistor uh, for gigahertz range. And uh, uh, the curves are a bit weird this time because, as you can see, uh, they are a bit uh, bowed. This because this transistor is not suitable for uh, making like uh, audio preamplifier class A audio preamplifiers because the HFE is not linear with the current, but not at every range. 
just at this range or higher because if we, if we go lower okay it starts to be a bit more linear but at a way low current okay now i think we have this fake transistor here that is medium in size but uh, it's a 2222 20, inside just a small transistor no base connection the probes are connected between base and emitter so like a diode we are analyzing the vbe and it acts as a silicon diode as you can see and it starts at like 0.7 volts and rises in current and yeah you can do also this same transistor but now uh, the opposite we are analyzing the veb so from emitter to base and it acts as some sort of zener that starts at like uh, 8.7 volts 9 volts and rises in current and maybe i'm not sure you shouldn't do this okay now something cool uh, we are analyzing the vec so from emitter to collector and considering it's a 2n 22 22 it has the classic weird uh, negative resistance effect it reaches kind uh, 7 volts then it drops in voltage and rises in current and it repeats and it's the classic functionality of that where the led blinker with a 2n2222 okay now a pnp uh, a bc327 25 i don't remember and the curves appear but uh, they are reversed and yeah you can still check this kind of transistors compare them probably and see if they work properly okay now a jfet uh, uh, bf 245 uh, c if i remember correctly and yeah the curve appears but these are driven in current on the gate so they are not much meaningful and yeah if i uh, turn down the uh, base current setting it becomes not lower but more depth because we are just reducing the, uh, the gate current drive that is not the proper way of testing and using a jfet but yeah okay now a mosfet a big mosfet 500 volts and uh, yeah there are no curves because there, are, there is no uh, current drive just a voltage drive but you can see that some curves so some voltage drives of the base the yellow clip uh, make the mosfet uh, in off state while the remaining ones make the mosfet in on state so yeah it's switching and it's working so thanks for uh, watching my video and as a bonus here's a bit of oscilloscope music on this scope and with this setup uh, audio source 12 plus 12 uh, stabilized power supply audio power amplifier and preamplifier for the x axis because the x axis is here and it needs at least 8 volts peak to peak for the uh, sweep sadly <laughs>